This video demonstrates some useful troubleshooting and debugging techniques which can be used with Silk Performer. Along the top here we see several options to allow you to create additional files for troubleshooting purposes. These are the same options which can be set in the Active Profile settings by selecting the Results icon. In the General tab you see the section Results Files. Selecting the Virtual User Log Files creates log files for each user. They contain all the function calls invoked by the transactions of a specific user to allow you to trace the user's actions. Virtual User Output Files generate output files for each user. These files contain the output of write statements used in the test script, which can be created to help troubleshoot exactly where a user has reached in a script and what value they have at a particular time so you can check if they have the correct value from a parse, for example. An output file is generated for a user only if that user executes write statements. The virtual user report file option generates report files for each user, which contain the simulation results for that user. The virtual user report on error file option generates report files for each virtual user only when an error occurs. Under the True Log tab, you have the following two options. True Log files, which create a full True Log file for each virtual user. These files contain all the function calls invoked by the transactions of a specific virtual user. The True Log on Error files option will generate a True Log on Error file for each user only at a specific severity level. This severity level can be specified in the True Log on Error section. By default, this is set to errors. The virtual user report on error files and the true log on error files can be turned on even for large load tests, where you expect a moderate number of errors without having a major impact on performance. However, all the other files should only be generated for debugging purposes as they can create additional overhead which can skew your results. If you do have those files selected, you will see a pop-up when you start the test which informs you of this. Here you can see some write-line statements we have created in the script to generate output for our virtual user output file. Using the write-line function rather than the write function will cause a new line to be taken for each statement written to the file. The first statement outputs the value the user has retrieved from the CSV file. The second is simply a statement to show that the user has passed a specific page and the third statement outputs the value of the session ID from the parse, which is performed above. We now select the options to generate the log files, user output files, report files and full true log files. Now, when we go to run the test, we get the pop-up informing you that logging options have been enabled and may skew the benchmarks, and you should choose if you wish to continue. When the test ends, we can see the generated files in the load test folder. Here we can see each of the files for each user in the test. This is the virtual user log file. Opening it, you can see the details on the transactions and functions that the user performed and the errors or responses generated by each. Next is the virtual user report file. This generates a report which shows the results for that specific user. The virtual user output file shows the output from our write line statements in the script. Finally, we have the true log file for this virtual user. This shows all the actions performed by the user when running the script. Next, we will generate the on error files. These are the files that can be activated for load test so a report and true log file are generated in the event of an error. We unselect the other file options and select the virtual user report on error and the true log on error options. This time when we run the test, you'll notice we don't see the same pop-up. In the workload configuration screen, you can see that the true log on error option has been enabled. After the test, you can look at the generated files and you can see the report file which contains all the details on the user who encountered the error, including the error details at the bottom.
In the true login error file, you can again see the error which was reported. And if you trace back through the steps, you will notice that only a few steps before the error step are included in the true log. This is as designed as the cause of the error can usually be identified in these few preceding steps. If you're still having issues running a script, a very common reason is that there is still customization required. To help identify this, you can perform two identical recordings of the same actions, being sure to clear your browser cache and cookies before each recording. You can then compare them for differences which may be candidates for customization. Here are two scripts we have already recorded which perform the same actions. To compare them, you can either open them side by side in Silk Performer like so, or open them in a comparison tool. Here we see the differences highlighted. Most here are simply differences in think time, for example, which can be ignored. However, at the bottom in the Forms section, we can see a field called SID, which denotes a session ID. Here we can see that it changes between recordings, so would be considered as a candidate for customization. You can also execute certain code in the event of a specific error. This can be achieved using an event handler, allowing you to react as you wish to a particular situation or event. A typical task of an event handler function is to perform, for example, cleanup statements after a transaction exit error, or generally catch an error or warning before it gets reported. You can find full details on event handlers and the available options in the Silk Performer help file. Here we have a sample event handler. In this simple example, we are checking the last error, and if it's a Web Engine 71 verification error, we are printing out a message. Otherwise, control will be passed back to the main script. The printed message is simply an example. You can perform any actions you want at this point. A print statement is an alternative to the write statement. This will show the output of the print statement in the virtual user tab when running a test. This will not be saved in any file, so will only be available until the display is changed. We have a verification in the script, and for demonstration purposes, we'll change it to force an error. Now, when we run a try script, we can see that the event handler has been triggered and performed the actions we required. When troubleshooting issues, a great source of information is the community site, which contains numerous articles and videos. You can access the community by going to community.microfocus.com. To access the Silk Performer section, go to Borland Silk Performer. There are various options here to browse through, and you can also see links to contact support line, access the product documentation, or knowledge base. And there's also a link where you can log any feature requests you may have. At the top of the page, there's a search bar. This is where you can search for any specific information you require, such as searching for an error you have encountered during your test. 